Retro Rob's Gaming Videos. Hey Rob here, I just finished off doing uh, my video on the Intellivision and I realized that I had not done one for something I picked up at a Goodwill a few days ago and that is the Dream Gear 30 and 1. Now I've seen other Dream Gears. I've seen 101 Dream Gear. So my question is, is the 30 and 1 a best of the Dream Gear? Well, I know that it's some type of Nintendo ripoff. It doesn't use like Nintendo games as such, but I think it's a Nintendo uh, platform ripoff, and the games are kind of cheap ripoffs of other games and often incomplete. I know that about it, but we'll try it out. Uh, it has a set of four, actually six buttons if you count the start and the uh, reset button. It's got an A and a B button. Oh, sorry, an A and a B button, and it has turbos for each. So that tells me this is probably really a two-button system. It has this nubby, which <laughs> it's it's questionable. I'll say that. Uh, and it's got a D-pad, also questionable in quality. But you know, I gotta tell you, when I when I put my hands on it, it really doesn't it doesn't feel particularly breakable. It feels actually fairly well built. Power switches on the top of these things. Ooh. And it has the usual video video and mono out. So let's try every one of these 30 quality programs and see if there's something in here worth playing. Oh, by the way, I paid $2.50 for it. Let's round it up to $3 and say I paid about $0.10 cents a game and see whether these games are worth $0.10 cents a piece. All right, here we go. We're going to start with Aero Engine. And it's a Defender-like shooter. It's not bad, actually. And I got to tell you, the controls are working out pretty well here. Um... Yeah, I mean, the graphics are really basic. Uh, the second button, or the B button, doesn't appear to do a dang thing. But as far as playability goes, there's some pickups here, and uh, it's kind of fun to play. Eh, not too bad. Bingo Zap. This is not a game. This is some kind of medieval torture. You know what? Just put the ball in the hole and keep doing it. This violates the Geneva Convention, I'm pretty sure. Next! No, really. Next. Birdie Nest! Yay! Alright, yeah, I know. It's kind of crappy looking, but it's not terrible. I mean, it's not great. But it's not terrible. Basically, you just move back and forth trying to avoid the poops and catch the eggs. Just like in real life. And you see it's you're kind of roughly tethered to the bird and the bird starts falling over or falling down. What is he doing anyway? Is he flying? Is he on a stick? I don't know. I don't really get it. But yeah, the game's not too bad. I mean, I don't know if it's worth a dime though. Bolt Fighter! Come on. Vertical shooter, you think? Oh yeah, it is. Uh, this one is very, very, very simple. It it plays pretty well. Again, you know, I'm surprised at how well this controller is holding up to this type of abuse, because I am really moving around a lot, and I do feel like I'm in control of the fighter. Uh, that said, the graphics are... Uh, this reminds me of some of the early Nintendo shooters, and I really don't care for early Nintendo shooters because they're not uh, very colorful and they're not very enjoyable. Uh, this one is not very colorful, and it's not very enjoyable. Bump car. Yep. Look at you get to select from one of three cars. I think this is supposed to be some kind of ripoff of Bump and Jump. But, as you can tell, I'm having a hard time getting moving, and uh, 
it took me a couple of minutes to figure out that I was hitting the wrong set of buttons. Uh, the turbo buttons don't work on this, and I have a tendency to grab the turbo buttons. But anyway, once uh, once I get going, I'm actually able to hit the jump button. There we go. And see, I can bump and jump. I, I don't really get the game, though. I'm not 100% sure what I'm supposed to be picking up and what's going to help me get from place to place. And what's with this road? It's like all messed up. Thank God it ended. Catch the Egg. Catch the Egg is a little bit like that old Activision game, Kaboom. Basically, you're trying to catch the eggs while you avoid the bombs. See that bomb? Yeah, there we go. Why are the birds dropping bombs on you? Pfft, I have no idea, but they are, and you must avoid them. The hardest thing about this is the controls. It looks like it has some kind of accelerometer base controls on it so it keeps speeding up as you press longer which makes it darn near impossible to actually catch anything reliably but the game's okay you know there's worse things to do with your time dart champion dart champion has absolutely nothing to do with darts i have no idea why they named that it does have a lot to do with clay pigeons though and you get to shoot them I'm about as good as I am with a real shotgun playing this game, too. Oh, my. I have a really hard time with this. Now, I think this is based on an actual skeet shooting game that was fairly popular. Uh, you use A button to shoot in the first box, and the B button to shoot in the second box, and you never seem to hit anything. Not very enjoyable. Dragon Fire! You know what this collection really needs? It needs a snake game. And Dragonfire is that snake game. Is it any good? Well, I don't know. How do you like snake games? If you like snake games, you'll probably think it's okay. I recommend using the D-pad instead of the fake analog stick, though. It seems to control this game better. Which is unusual, because most games work better with the fake analog stick. It's okay. There's really just not much excitement to it, and I had a hard time paying enough attention to get through stage one. Elfland. Oh, Elfland. I'm pretty sure this is the only platform game in this collection of games. And, unfortunately, it had to do it wrong. It's not terrible in mechanics, however, uh, the whole idea is off. Basically, you dip yourself in one of those paint cans. By the way, to uh, get to that third paint can, you press down and press your jump button. Just so you know, because I know people have had a hard time figuring that out. Uh, anyway, once you turn a color, you can kill anything of that color by running into it. Then you try to collect their little souls, I guess, and get points for them. You also appear to be slowly draining yourself of color at the same time. Excel Racing. Yet another racing game. This one's not too bad, really. It's not too great, either. It's a bit like Rally X. And it's a little bit like Bomberman, because you can drop little bombs. Actually, I think they're oil slicks, but they look like bombs to me, and I'm going to call them bombs. Anyway, basically, you collect the little flags, and once you collected all the little flags, you finish the level. Not bad, right? Uh, eventually, I do get chased by some other cars. Really. There they are. Yay! Get ready to talk to the hand in Fish Catcher. That's right. Catch fish with your hand. Just like those folks down south do. Look at that. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! As usual, there's a bomb somewhere in there. Don't grab the bomb. Oh, I think it's a bomb fish. 
Yeah, not so great. Totally gonna be just like Super Hang On, right? Um, well, no. Um, yeah, this is another one of those racing games that are pretty prevalent in this particular collection. It's, you know, it reminds me a lot of Commodore 64 racing games for some reason. Anything you touch kills you, uh, except I think you're supposed to pick up fuel. That's a rock, by the way. I thought it might be a gold bag. No. No. I gave up on this one pretty quickly. Ugh. This game also kind of reminds me of those 80s Tomy racing games, except with, like, two more colors. Insect Chase. This is going to be exciting. Yep. Pull out your net and start grabbing them bugs, ladies and gentlemen. I think really you're supposed to be getting the butterflies and avoiding everything else. Uh, everything looked the same to me, though, and I kept catching stuff that apparently was the wrong thing. Eh, wait a minute. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I played this game way longer than I should have. Yep, see? I got it. I got it, but in a minute here, I just start dying. There we go. Got it again. Oh, see? There. I, apparently that's a B. I think that's supposed to be a B. I caught a B, and that's what got me killed. Alright, I get it now. Enough of this. It's Jewel Master! Yep, it looks a lot like a Bejeweled clone, doesn't it? And it is a Bejeweled clone. How exciting! Let's see if I can get a row here. Um, mm, there we go. There we go. Three in a row. Wait, wait. What the? Oh, I accidentally hit the B button. How come it took so long for it to disappear, though? So what? You got to wait like five seconds for the thing to disappear? I didn't have to wait that long that time. Eh, enough of this crap. Last Cabra. I believe it meant last cobra. Did I misread that? Anyway, yeah, another vertical shooter. This one's a lot like the last one. If you notice, it also uses some of the uh, art assets from the other games. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's it's passable. It's better than getting kicked in the teeth. Is it worth ten cents? Yeah, it's worth ten cents. Why not? I also kind of like the uh, patterns of the fighters. They've got pretty interesting formations. That said, there's not a whole lot of pickups, and the pickups aren't very exciting. Nor is the really, really green background. Super Hang On Clone! And as far as Super Hang On clones go, it's pretty good. You know, in the 80s, Super Hang On was state of the art. Nowadays, it's really bad. I'm kind of surprised at how many racing games really are in this collection because this type of racing game really doesn't hold up to time. But, well, eh, it's alright. Not great. Just alright. Move fun! Is this a bejeweled clone? Why, yes it is, with fruit. Look at me swapping those. I'm really good at moving fruit around. Yep. Um, I guess for this kind of game, it's competent enough. And if you like swapping fruits or people, you have your choice. There was a third choice, too. What was it? It was, uh... Flowers. Flowers. It was flowers. Yeah. So, if you want to swap people, fruits, or flowers, you could do worse than this. You could also do a lot better. Ocean Quest. Proving that incomplete counts as an F. It's 
kind of a racing game with a boat. It calls itself a quest. See how I pick stuff up? That's pretty great, huh? The other thing I can do is run other boats out of the river. Here I go. It's coming. It's coming. Smack. Smack. Yeah, he's dead. Well, you can keep on doing this for another 97 seconds. Because I'm pretty sure that's all there is to see. I played this way longer than I should have because I kept expecting something new to happen. But no, just the same background repeating over and over again. Have you noticed that? How many times have you seen that crane? One, two, three. Oh yeah, it was like 20 times before that too. So you just keep on going, doing the same thing over and over and over again until you die. Oh please, just let me die. Let me die. Oh, sweet release. Paint Master. This is a bit like Amidar for the Atari 2600. Uh, instead of being a paint roller, you're, I don't know, some kind of painting bug. Man, the colors are really, really ugly. And this game really is just ridiculously hard for only having two things on the screen. I don't really understand what the bunny rabbit's doing in there, or the teddy bear, or that... Is that a dinosaur? Is that Barney bent over? I don't know. But anyway, it's not terrible or anything. It's just not very exciting, and the colors are so bland. Until the next level, but the problem is that the next level looks exactly like this one, but in a different color. And faster, I guess. I'm going to fast forward and just show you it. See what I mean? Same level. Ugh. Bye. Pinball track. Well, Forrest Gump once said, stupid is as stupid does, and this game's pretty stupid. Look, you can kind of hear how the soul's been sucked out of me throughout the course of this, okay? This game is a soul sucker. It's not good. It's not entertaining. I don't even get it. I mean, well, look, there's see those little notches? You avoid the little notches and you pick stuff up, okay? So I get the point of the game. The problem is it's not real consistent about when it pays attention to the stupid notches. Bad. Bad. Runner car. Do the cars have feet? No, they don't. This is a bump and jump clone. It's not a very good bump and jump clone, but it is a bump and jump clone. I kind of like the sounds in this one. You hear how uh, when you're passing it actually makes a little bit different of an engine sound when you pass by? That's pretty cool. Uh, otherwise you grab money that's left on the road with your car and swerve between all these vehicles. You're also supposed to pick up fuel. They love games where you have to pick up fuel in this particular collection. I don't really understand why, although I guess it adds something to the game. Yet again, we have a whole lot of repeating of the background. You notice how we just passed the same building twice in a row? Yeah, get used to that. Three. Keep going. Four. Five. Six. It's like the Twilight Zone, isn't it? Where you just keep passing the same spot? Sea War. This is actually a pretty good sub-hunt clone. I like it. The controls control well. Uh, it's challenging. It doesn't need to have a changing background, so I don't have to worry about the background repeating over and over again. Looks pretty good. Plays pretty good. Not bad at all. I wonder if you get extra lives. I didn't play it long enough to find out. But still, I can live with this one. So, this one is worth 10 cents. Or more. I'm gonna just keep playing for a while. By the way, I'm really spamming the heck out of the fire button. It's just that you're only allowed to have three bombs on the screen at one time. That's okay. It adds to the challenge. And the fun. Smart Escape. This one looks like it should be a great game. Look at it. It's even got a password system so you can continue. But I had a hard time figuring out exactly what's going on in this. At first, I'm able to collect stuff left and right. But as I progress in the game... Eh, here, let me hit the fast forward again. Ooh. 
right here, I can't pick stuff up anymore. And I don't understand whether it's an inventory thing, because there's no inventory on the screen. I'm showing you the whole screen. I don't really understand. Am I supposed to be doing something with these chests? Well, there's no instructions to tell me. I suppose I could look it up online and see what's really supposed to be going on here. But it's such a kind of samey looking game that I didn't really want to do that. Yeah, I can't pick up hearts either. And why don't I have a heart up there anymore? I don't... What is going on in this game? I don't really get it. But it might be good. Space Castle. This is a Space Invaders game. I'm going to note something. It looks really, really nice. And it has a lot of things that I like about it, like pickups. Uh, it does have a mothership that flies across the top of the screen. But the real problem with this game is I'm spamming the button right now. Right there. In fact, even during parts of it, I'm using the auto fire. And the fire just seems to be random. There's no indicator to say when you've reloaded and can fire again. And also, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme and a reason to how long it takes to fire. So it's very hard to get into a pattern with it. And due to that, I can't say it's real great. I do finish this level, however. See that? Done deal. And now you're on purple level. Notice that this level is actually a little bit different than the last one. I'll be danged. Spinball. This game sounds so exciting, it's hard to believe that it is this amazingly boring. Basically, you try to get out of the maze in the shortest time possible. There is a key somewhere in the maze. There it is. It's green. I know, it doesn't look like a key. That's why I miss it on the first try. But anyway, there's a key in the maze. It's green. At least I think it's always green. And you have to pick up the key and then run through the door the shortest time possible. How exciting is that? And then I go for a clock here because uh, that adds time. Unfortunately, it doesn't add as much time as I lost getting the stupid clock. Anyway, well, here, just, just watch me do this. There we go. And then you turn into another ball, but I don't see any advantage to collecting these pickups because I, they don't appear to do anything to me. I don't know, are they adding points? Are they slowing down time? I'm not 100% sure. I should have grabbed those fries too on uh, the way out. Anyway, boring game. It's time for another side-scrolling shooter. Oh wait! It didn't look anything like the picture. It's a vertical shooter. This is one of the best vertical shooters that they've got in this package, by the way. It has a few different pickups. It has different enemies that shoot from different angles. It has pretty much everything you'd expect in a game. Yes, of course, the background repeats over and over again like it does in everything else, but the controls are nice, and it has a couple different weapons, and the patterns are difficult, so that makes it kind of playable. Yeah, this is easily worth 10 cents. Yay, it carried its weight. Ultra Doggy. What an unfortunate name. What a strange game. It's a bit like Frogger. You're trying to cross the street, right? See, I just got myself run over. But here's the thing. You've got a bunch of little things you can pick up and collect. You see, like, there's that little boot over there? But most importantly, there are keys. And you need those keys to unlock the gates up at the top so that you can exit, I believe, to your doghouse? I don't know. But they show you a bunch of little things that you can collect, too. And you can collect these things. This game's kind of hard. Honestly, it didn't feel as slow as it looks on the screen when I was playing it. Yeah, not too bad. Not great, but at least it's something different. I'm going to hit the fast forward button real quick so I can get you to the end of this level to show you how it works. Man, this score timer is taking forever. Valiant Rescue. It's a bug game. You're a bug. 
and you are flying around shooting other bugs. It's okay as far as this kind of thing goes. There might be a few too many top-down shooters in here. By the way, this is a lot like Xevious in that you have a bomb button. So your A button does your primary fire and your B button does bombing. There's pickups to make things a little bit more exciting. I believe they're the same icons used in some other games as well. But hey, eh, it's alright. Nothing great though. Wilson! Hey, here's a great idea. Let's take a block game and turn it into a video game. Yeah. So basically what you're doing here is you're taking those lit up pieces and you're laying them into the puzzle so that they fill up the box. It's about as exciting as it looks. By the way, aren't I amazing at this game? I mean, look at I must be a genius to be finishing this game so quick. No, not really. This puzzle's astoundingly easy. I pass! Zero Tiger, and this is the last game of the bunch. It's a side-scrolling shooter! Nope, psych! It's top-down. Another Xevious clone. It's, again, okay. It has way, way, way too much green. Yet again, you're using the A button to do your primary fire and the B button to drop bombs. For some reason, these games are really, really hard on this system. And again, I don't really blame the uh, controller itself because it functioned pretty admirably. Just something uh, with the way that the game's written. So here I am shooting. Let's see if we see these same buildings again before this ends. Oh, too late. It's over. Well, I think if we learned anything today, it's that the old adage, you get what you pay for, is quite true. I paid $2.50 to $3 for this, and I got $2 worth of fun. Maybe $3. Uh, let's just say $3 worth of fun. Uh, as far as the controller quality goes, I have to say I was... I was surprised to find that this this was a used device. The controller worked great. It performed the entire time. Uh, no missed uh, no missed button presses, no nothing. It really performed well, and it felt solid while I was playing it. In fact, I've paid more for systems that have uh, had less of a controller on them. Uh, would I pay $20 for this? No. No, I would not. If you come upon it for ten dollars at a uh, you know at a discount store, yeah, I'd go ahead and get it. If it's for the kids, uh, if you get it for three dollars at a thrift shop, mm, worth that. Just to sit in your drawer for the grandkids, maybe. Well, thank you very much for watching this. By the way, I give it a thumb sideways. It's you know, it's okay. If you like this video, please. Give a thumbs up, like that, and subscribe for more. Bye.